You've got a great fantasy story to tell. You've got great characters to tell your story. But something's not quite right in your world. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today this is part two of our writing fantasy and imps journey. Now, I'm no expert on writing, but I have written a children's epic illustrated fantasy novel that is due to be published this year. And I thought I'd share my experiences with you fellow imps. It might help if you're writing fantasy. But anyway, enough of me waffling on. Let's start, shall we? Well, first of all, part two is all about creating your world. In fantasy, one thing that is really, really noticeable is when something is fake and when something is real. Because you're dealing in fantasy and mythical creatures and dragons and imps and ogres, obviously they don't exist in real life, do they? No, they don't. Let's say they don't. Um, you want to start writing about those. And what I found is that if you're writing about something fantastical and made up, it has to appear ultra real in, audience, uh, in order for your readership to actually believe it. Now, there was a quote that I really love. I watched all the how to, you know, the making of Lord of the Rings, and Peter Jackson said to his film crew and cast, We're making history. We're not making a fantasy film, we're making history. And that is a really good thing to actually remember when you're writing. If you, any of you have read Game of Thrones or watched Game of Thrones, it's the same principle. They're making history that happens to have fantasy elements in, in, in it. Now, part one was all about um, starting with your ideas and why you want to write fantasy, the urge to write fantasy. And we looked about inspiration and where you can maybe create inspiration to generate ideas. And once you've generated all those ideas, well, what do you do with them? Well, the thing is, for me, before I could start writing my story and you know letting my characters run wild, I decided I'd have to do a little bit of planning on world building because I wanted to know various things within the world that my characters are going to exist. I wanted to know what that world is. And what I decided to do was I started writing about what the political situation was, what the religious situation was, you know, what, what sort of clothes do they wear, what money do they use, all of that. And there came a point when I got a bit bogged down with that and it was, well actually, I think I've got enough now to just start writing the story. And that is something that will be special to you. Only you will know when you're ready to start writing your story. So that said, you might just think, well, I've got the characters, I've got a bit of a vague story going on. Yeah, go ahead and start writing. Some people do it that way around. They create the world as they're writing. Other people, like myself, like to do a little bit of planning. But there does come a cutoff point where you could just spend years and years and years creating your fantasy world without actually writing your story. So, the, the feeling of starting writing a story can be overwhelming. So what I decided to do, I decided to break down various ways to just start writing so it doesn't feel overwhelming. Do little small steps. And the first thing I decided to do, it just kind of happened naturally and it seemed to work, was start concentrating on your actual characters. Now, the very least, you should know your main character or characters very, very well. And that means that you have to create a profile for each of your main characters. Now, you know, if you're not big into doing that, that's fine. Some people do that on the hoof. But I found it very useful because if I know my characters before I start writing, I'll know how they're going to react to things. I will know their motivations. I know what drives them. And for me, that's really key when you're writing fantasy or any type of writing, actually. So it's a good idea to start fleshing out your characters before you start writing. One way of doing that is just to ask as many questions about your characters as possible. What you want to do is write a profile for each of your characters. You've got to ask yourself not just about their physical appearance, because obviously, yes, you want to 
know what they look like, you want to you know, know how fast they can run, you want to know all their physical attributes, what colour eye they have, all of that. But also you want to know what their mind is about, what their heart's about. You want to know their spiritual side and you want to know their intellectual side as well. So that's key. So what I decided to do was then, you, the other thing is that what, how do they see themselves? You know, we've all got an opinion of what we think we're like, which can be very, very different, trust me, to what other people actually think of you and what reality is. So I might think I'm hilarious and very witty, and then actually my friends think, no, he's not. He tries to be funny, but he can't. <laughs> that's a bit too close for comfort there. But anyway, that's kind of, you know, what I'm trying to get at. So that's really interesting because you can have two characters talking about another character and they're really saying how wonderful he is and how amazing he is. And then the other character comes in and is horrible to somebody and, you, and the reader thinks, well, hang on, that's a distorted image. So then you know, you know, it just adds that extra depth to all your characters. And it gives you a chance to, you know, to, to play against type as well. Because if people think that one character is particularly nasty, and when they do a, an act of kindness, that's a really nice twist, it's a really nice character, uh, character arc that you can put in there. So you, you've got to start asking questions such as what their religious views are, what's their political views, what's their ethical views, are they moral, are they lawful, are they unlawful, would they, you know, do, do they, don't, they don't mind stealing, would they murder someone, how far do their morals stretch? Um, you've also got to ask yourself, what their underlying motivation is. Is it money? You know, are they greedy? Is it kindness? Do they just think that, you know, our, our place on earth is to just be kind to everybody? Is it love? So what's their underlying motivation? There might be two or three of those. And if you work all that out, then you'll know how they're gonna to react to a situation. One thing, I, a good question to ask about your characters is, how do they get on with animals? Do they love animals? Are they kind to animals? Because that, again, can be a good reflection on how they're going to behave towards other races. And especially in fantasy, you've got orcs and elves and all those other races. How do they feel about all the other races? So that, again, gives more depth and, and more believability to your characters. You've got to ask yourself what their dreams are, what their ambitions are. You know, we all have desires in life. And are they happy with their life? Do they want more? Are they unhappy? And if so, why are they unhappy? Um, as I say, asking all these questions will add depth to your characters. Then you've got to look at their backgrounds. Were they brought up poor? Were they brought up rich? Were they jealous of their brothers and sisters? You know, there's lots of questions in their background that shape who they are at that present time when you first start writing about the characters. And remember, characters need to go on a development, an arc, a journey. So again, start thinking about if you know what their motivations are, then they'll start planning to get whatever they want and that will spark the actual character arc and the journey itself. One thing I thought was very fascinating is doing a profile for yourself. So ask all those questions about yourself. What's your loves, your desires, all of that, because that's a good way, a good practice way of just creating a character. And try and be as honest as possible because you'll find that you can fill in loads of detail because you might think, well, this is a bit overwhelming. But I find the more you start writing, the more it just flows. That is a really good exercise. I did that and it's, sometimes it can be quite shocking. <laughs> um, so once you've got your characters and, they, and by then, you know, that'll be quite fully rounded characters. You've got enough information about them. But now we're going to ask about what type of world they actually exist in. And obviously the world that they exist in can influence and will affect their behaviour. And again, that creates part of their story arc. So, again, it can be overwhelming. When you think about the world, it's a big, scary place. I have thought of categories to just tackle about asking yourself about what is in your world. And I came up with a list of 22. It was not just me thinking, you know, various how to write books. Um, and various websites over the years that I've read. There's 22 categories, which again is a bit overwhelming. Now you won't need to flesh out all 22 categories. 
because that is what I tried to do and it just became too much. So you kind of think, well, I'll pick some key ones. What do I think is necessary? Because you might have an idea of what your story is going to be about. So if it's sort of political, it's very political orientated, then you're going to have to work out, is there a government, is there a monarchy? So there's going to be some that are more priority driven than others. Um, so some examples that I'll just share with you now. Now I will put loads of, I'll put this whole list in the description uh, of the YouTube channel for you to look at. And also I'll be mentioning some reference books at the end and we'll, we'll, I'll list all of those as well. So my fantasy world is called Edra and I really like the Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, medieval fantasy England type feel. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I put a little bit of low level steampunk into it as well. So you've got to think about for me, the uh, politics and the power. Was it a monarchy? Is it government? What are the creatures and the monsters? What are they all about? Um, and if there's an earthquake, you might have noticed there was an earthquake there with the camera. <laughs> You've got to know about technology and can you use, you know, what sort of technology, what level of technology have they got? As I say, I really like steampunk, so I put a little bit of steampunk technology into my one. What are their jobs and their professions? You know, is it the normal? It's good to do research on medieval jobs and professions. Their clothes, costumes, I have to think about that. What are their traditions and festivals? Because you can tell a lot about a race, about their traditions and festivals. And obviously their religion, that's again another thing I thought about. And the money system, what sort of money do they have? Now, because mine's steampunk, I thought cogs. So I call mine coglets. And they're sort of little gems in the middle of the metal. And they're shaped like cogs. Just something a little bit different, a little bit of flavour. But there does come a limit, as I say. You'll start getting overwhelmed. So you'll know when you start fleshing out your world where you know when you can start actually writing um and as you continue to write you might crop up there might be something like oh yeah i don't need to worry about money because nobody's buying anything but then you might write a scene where you, somebody actually does buy something and then you have to start thinking of the money obviously that's fine um so what else here what have i got here you'll also need to um know pretty much every single detail of your world as you write but for me, just starting writing does generate more ideas and more questions. You can, you know, it, because it's fantasy, it does have to have rules and facts, like laws of nature, for example, because otherwise it becomes un unbelievable. Magic is obviously going to be a key factor in a fantasy book. You have to work out everything about magic. Now, not everything, but a lot about magic before you write. That would be my advice. Does everybody have magic? Is it easily attained? Is there different types of magic? Who controls the magic? Does anyone control the magic? Or is it very low level? Or has it not been discovered yet and somebody discovers magic and then tries to keep it secret? Anything to do with magic, I would definitely, definitely try and work out. Ask loads of questions. What, it, what would it be like in a world where everybody had magic? It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? So you'd have to then put laws in place to stop people casting spells all the time, you know, because it'd be dangerous. Um, but remember, you're in control of this, so you can put in as much or as little of magic in as you like. There are some really good reference books. Um, I've got a selection here that I've just collected over the years. Um, these, for example, the Element Encyclopedia selection here, they're just amazing. They're thick, chunky books full of loads of information. So you can, you know, like this one, for example, the uh, Encyclopedia of Secret Societies, if you're trying to think up of a a magician's guild, well, if you've been reading about an actual one that existed in history, you could kind of base it on that and modify it a bit. It's an inspiration. And again, this one of witchcraft is fantastic. I've got one here of magical creatures. So those are absolutely amazing. Totally recommend these. Now again, I'll put all these in the descriptions. One brilliant thing to create your world and it is this series here. I have mentioned these before and that's the complete guide to writing fantasy. And there's three volumes totally recommend them. I actually didn't cotton on to them. I didn't, well, I didn't discover them until I pretty much finished writing my first draft. And once I read those, I went back and added a few more things in and it really revolutionised my world. I was really happy with reading those. We've got here, there's this one, the Writer's Complete Fantasy Reference Book. Uh, what else? Oh, the other thing I would recommend is definitely get yourself some baby name books because you will need to come up with names for your characters. It's always nice to have slightly different names. You, for me, anyway, names that you can pronounce <laughs> that make sense. 
And having good baby name books is brilliant. Obviously, there's lots of uh, websites now that do naming baby uh, websites as well so you can tap into those but they're really fun to play with you know joining two names together to create a new name and what I would also recommend mine my is actually all mine's in verse and when I discovered that you can actually get the Oxford rhyming dictionary that was a godsend it was brilliant and I discovered new words I didn't know but it was good because I could rhyme them so I then looked them up in a good decent dictionary now I've got here the Oxford concise dictionary Recommend a really good dictionary, don't get a cheap one. And also you need a thesaurus because it's, you know, you'll be writing and you want to keep your readers interested. You want them to be interested in what you're writing and a good way is obviously to find different ways of saying, expressing what you want to say. So those are the reference books. As I say, there are loads out there, you know, if you do have any that are favourite of yours, I'm interested in, to know that, so leave comments. Um, but yeah, so that for me is how you, it's a really brief thing, creating a word, when I started writing this it's a big topic, so hopefully I've done it justice here. Thank you so much for watching, look out for part three coming soon. <laughs> writing fantasy, an imp's journey, part two, creating your world. I hope I have done it justice and you found that of interest. Obviously leave any comments, it'd be nice to know what you think and if you do have any reference books to recommend. Please do. I'll be putting all my recommended reference books in the description. But until the next time, remember, keep it unreal, especially fantasy writing. <laughs>